Bible study with me women of the Bible series today we're looking at the woman of the well for our women's Bible study and as always there will be a Bible study free printable in the description box and I will be Bible journaling so grab your Bible grab your Bible journaling supplies if you want a Bible journal with me print off the Bible study free printable and let's dive in to this Bible study on the women of the Bible specifically the woman at the well this is one of my favorite if not my very favorite Bible passage and so I already have a few notes in it but I've tried to leave it as blank as possible <laughs> that um, because I knew I was gonna do a Bible study on it so I am so ready to mark all in it <laughs> Now, typically in this series, I do a Bible study on a woman of the Bible, and then we also pair it with like a godly woman of the modern day. But today, we're going to pair it with a look at Christian hedonism. I wanted to look at this debated topic or this theological concept, and let me know what you guys think about kind of throwing in a new um, theological topic into our Bible studies. I feel like you guys really liked when I shared a lot of what I'm learning about in seminary, and this isn't something I'm learning about in seminary, but I figured, hey, this is something I'm thinking about. Why don't we talk about this theological concept in the Bible study this week? So let me know what you think, but let's dive in to this women's Bible study. Open up to John 4. Now the context of John 4 is that we just um, were at John 3. So John 3, we, we all know John 3, 16, for God to love the world. But the context of that is often forgotten. Jesus is talking to this man called Nicodemus. I like to call him Nico for short. <laughs> Actually, fun story. I did a biblical and theological studies undergrad degree. And in that degree, we had to do a huge, like in-depth exegetical paper on John 3. And so I loved studying that and there we see like a really holy man like a really godly good man approach Jesus and he has questions he's kind of like right before becoming a believer and it's actually debated if he ever did have a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ um, and he, so he's just basically asking Jesus who are you and in that God in his sovereignty chose to preach the gospel to Nicodemus while well, immediately following this conversation with a well-educated, well-respected, holy man, um, we see Jesus have this conversation with the woman at the well. It should be noted, she's not named, she's a woman, and she's a sinful woman. She's a Samaritan woman. So she's kind of like the opposite on the spectrum. Um, we've noted before in our Bible studies here in this series on the women of the Bible that women are not viewed the same way as they are viewed today in Old Testament times, New Testament times, the whole reason why feminism exists to this day is that women are historically not viewed as valuable or as influential as men. It is very important here to just note that Jesus is talking to a woman, right? Not only is he talking to this woman, but he's talking to this woman who's a Samaritan. So Samaritans, whoo, Jews hated Samaritans. Jews viewed them as half breeds. They were polytheistic, so they like worshiped the same God, but they also worshiped other gods. They were Gentiles. They had like corrupt worship. Just Jews do not appreciate Samaritans or Samaria. And they would actually go out of the way whenever traveling um, to get away from Samaritans, to not go to this well, for example. And so Jesus, we see um, in verse four, we're going to work verse by verse in this Bible study. So have your Bible out. If you want to, you can go ahead and pause this video and read the whole section. Um, but we're just going to work verse by verse. We see in verse four that Jesus had to pass through Samaria. This is important in here. Like you might be reading this and like we've talked about in this video, we want to ask the kind of obvious questions, the who, what, when, where, and why. So you read verse four and it says, and he had to pass through Samaria, Samaria. And you're like, why did he have to pass through Samaria? That's there for a reason. So Jews would avoid Samaria at all costs because they hated Samaritans, right? And so Jesus had to go to Samaria. 
And any good Jew reading this would be like, why did he have to go to Samaria? We don't like going to Samaria. We avoid Samaria at all costs. Those are the ugly, corrupt half-breeds. And Jesus had a reason. He had a plan. He had an ordained, important conversation to have with a Samaritan, dirty, sinful woman. So if you're new here and you don't know about this series, this Bible study with me, Women of the Bible series, we basically just every single Friday, we look at a different woman of the Bible and we look at a modern day godly woman. And we like to Bible journal through it and there's a devotional, like free printable Bible study thing down in the description box. So you can check that out as well. And then on Mondays, I share all kinds of Christian living, Bible study tips, day in the life of Christian mom. I'm a mom in seminary, so I share like seminary stuff, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you're subscribed, like this video, that really truly does help other people find this kind of content if they're looking for it. And consider sharing this video with somebody who might benefit from it, who's also looking to grow in their faith and get more in depth in their Bible studies. All right, let's get back to this Bible study. Not only is just having this conversation with a woman, a Jew with a female Samaritan, but also this is the longest conversation ever recorded, especially in the book of John, in the whole Bible of Jesus with somebody else. It's with a sinful Samaritan woman at a well, noonday. Like people went to the well in the middle of the day, in case you didn't know, um, if they weren't accepted to go in the morning time is when women usually went because it's less hot, it's less a big deal. She had to go in the middle of the day because all the Jews hated her and she wasn't accepted. She was viewed as unclean. She was viewed as a sinner. I will later find out because she had many husbands. Jesus meets her right where she is hated. Jesus meets her right in her brokenness. So if you're Bible journaling with me, make sure to make note of that. Jesus meets her right in her brokenness. But remember, this conversation is also coming right after his conversation with Nico, Nicodemus, in chapter three. And so we see this dichotomy of Jesus being what is needed, being, being the grace and the love and the satisfaction and the salvation for the most holy, awesome, accepted Nicodemus, but also for the most unholy, rejected, broken Samaritan. You're meant to see the dichotomy here, the, the, the comparison between the lowest of the low and what was viewed as like the highest of the high maybe. There's a dichotomy here, but there's also another dichotomy. Jesus asks her for water. Again, this is crazy because he's talking to a Samaritan. He's also asking something of a Samaritan woman. Men didn't even talk to women. He's talking to a Samaritan woman. She's caught off guard. She's like, what is going on? He asks her for water. And then the crazy dichotomy is by the end of the conversation, he is offering her not only water, he's offering her living water. And we're supposed to also see that dichotomy. They're sitting there at the well. There's a beautiful imagery of water quenching thirst and Jesus offers her the living water. But I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself. So if you're Bible journaling with me, make sure you circle every single time you see water. And then notice that in verse 10, it switches to living water. In fact, in verses seven through 15 is kind of one section and that's where Jesus is offering living water. And then verses 16 through 26, Jesus is calling us to true worship to a true worshipful understanding of who he is. But really take note of this dichotomy. In verse six, you might wanna circle this. Jesus is tired. We see his humanity and the awesome doctrine of the fact that Jesus is 100% man and 100% God. Now, John Calvin in his commentary, I got it right here. I really, these are my, this is my husband's and these are really special to him. He wouldn't let me mark in it. So I had to put like a sticky note. If y'all know me, I write all in my books, right? Okay, so, so Jesus is fatigued by his journey, but he was actually fatigued. He's not pretending to be tired in order that he might be better prepared for the exercise of sympathy and compassion towards us. He took upon him our weaknesses. He takes on our tiredness. He takes on our fatigue for the purpose of sympathy that he might have compassion upon us. I just thought that was beautiful. So Jesus starts talking to this woman. They're, they're talking about the water. They're talking about the well. And she's like totally questioning him. She's like taking jabs at Jesus. See in verse, in verse 12, she takes like a jab at Jesus. And she's like, are you not better than our father Jacob? Like take note of the fact that like, Jesus Christ is talking to this sinful woman. She's at the well in the middle of the day because she's rejected, right? 
and she like does not deserve one word from this man but her first inclination is like who does he think he is? And isn't that just so true of our heart state? We too do not deserve even one word from this man, even one opportunity to have a conversation with this man. And yet Jesus reaches out to us even when we were still sinners, even when we were still leaning away like, who is this Jesus? Like John Calvin says in his commentary, though in all of us, he has displayed a similar instance of compassion. Jesus too has acted within us in the same way, in, in similar compassion in that we just totally, in our own brokenness, we reject Christ so often. And then we taste of his fullness after what? After conviction. And so we see that Jesus calls her out, go call your husband. And that is where the turning in the conversation happens. When it just turns from this like, almost like a metaphor of water to like a practicality in her life where she is seized and is convicted and meets her sin. So Jesus calls her to true worship. And that starts with an awareness of our sin, our awareness of our need for a savior, of living water. We are like dry and thirsty land. And this water that he offers us is like a spring, ever flowing, the Holy Spirit within us, working within us, giving us new life. And it's also important to notice here that it's free for the asking. It's not for the working, it, we, we can't earn it. We can't work for it like Ephesians 2, but ever more so she could never earn it. She is not even allowed anywhere near the temple. Um, she's a Samaritan woman, etc., etc. And so much more are we so not worthy, so not ever able even in the reach to pursue um, salvation and Jesus offers it free for the asking. And so we see in this Bible study that Jesus uses a woman to reveal himself as the Messiah, to reveal himself as our true satisfaction. There's a loud helicopter going over me. I hope you guys can hear that. Oh, it's not a helicopter, it's a crop duster. <laughs> Perils of living in the country. <laughs> Anyway, so Jesus uses this instance with a sinful woman at a well noonday to break all barriers and offer us living water. We see that she's able to receive it after she's met with her brokenness, after he reveals her brokenness and that he's fully aware of it and yet still offering her salvation. But we also see that her satisfaction in him, her um, satisfaction in God immediately leads her to get up, leave behind her water jugs and run and go tell anybody she can in full on worship and praise of God Almighty, right? And so this is where that Christian hedonism comes in, this um, theological concept I wanted to talk about. John Piper coined this term, Christian hedonism. And it sounds a little like, what are you talking about? It sounds a lot weirder than what it is. Let me read you the definition of hedonism off of Google. Google dictionary says, hedonism is the pursuit of pleasure or sensual self-indulgence. In philosophy, it's the ethical theory that pleasure is the highest good and proper aim of human life. So Piper coined this term, or hopefully you've heard this quote. Um, let me turn to where I have it written in my Bible. In Philippians, where's Philippians? Here we go. Piper says, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. And let me know down in the comments, let me know down in the comments if you've heard that quote before. But this is part of his, um, this idea that he coined of Christian hedonism, that when we are most satisfied in God, he is most glorified in us. And I see that here in the woman at the well of John 4, that she, just like Christian hedonism, she was so satisfied in the Lord, so renewed in him, um, he satisfied her deepest longings that she was trying to satisfy in other men. He met those like that. And she ran and couldn't help but tell everybody she came in contact with about the man who knew all that she had ever done. And there's a pushback against this idea. Um, a lot of people think you can take it too far, which Piper himself says, yeah, you totally can. It's this idea that like, if we pursue our full satisfaction in Jesus, he is honored. Um, so Piper uses this example of his wedding anniversary. 
taking his wife out on a date and getting her flowers and all that kind of stuff. No one would ever say that's selfish. He's honoring his wife. He's honoring his marriage and celebrating it. And so just the same as when we make our full satisfaction in Christ, we were honoring God and we were worshiping him. Um, God is most glorified when we are most satisfied in him. And so I, I really think this is like a huge concept, especially in women's lives. And I think um, we just really see this in John 4. Let me know down in the comments if you can like, if you are on the same brainwave as me and if you can like kind of connect. But I feel like women especially, we have these longings and we also have so many areas of our life where we can try and pacify those longings. Like shopping, like children, like our husband, like beauty. There's like so many areas for women especially where it's really easy to try and pacify our deepest longings in anything but Jesus. And we see again with this idea of Christian hedonism that we that God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. That is an act of worship to run after him, to, to honor him and finding all of our satisfaction in him, having our eyes locked in on Jesus. And I guess, I mean, I didn't really plan to mention her again, but like Elizabeth Elliot, like we um, Bible studied her last week. I'll link that up above. But all of her satisfaction was in Jesus, running after Jesus, running after the cross as her all, even when she was a single mama in the forest of South America without, or in the jungle of South Africa, or hello, in the forest, no, in the jungle of South America when her husband had just been killed, she loved those very men who had taken her husband's life. So how much more so are we called to run after the Lord as our full satisfaction and not be um, distracted by the things of this world, by all the things that we might be tempted to pacify our longings with? If you're taking notes or if you're Bible journaling with me or if you're just Bible studying with me, maybe you're Bible journaling on the back of your Bible study free printable. You could totally be doing that. I want you to look at the second half of chapter four. This woman runs out screaming God's praises, come meet the man. And she tells everybody about what Jesus did. He knew everything I've ever done. And she's praising and glorifying God and pointing other people to Christ. We miss everything in this women's Bible study if we don't see that when we study the women of the Bible, God is glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. Um, not to like reiterate that one more time, but it's truly like Christian hedonism, like we as women have this amazing role in the midst of being tempted towards all these different things, we could try and pacify our longings in beauty or pacify our longings in our spouse or pacify our longings in this, that, and the other, kids, housework, whatever. We have this amazing role where people are watching us, children are being raised by us, our spouses are leaning on us for food and laundry or whatever, not to say that we're only housekeepers, but you know what I mean. Um, we have the ability to speak into every part of living and say, only Jesus satisfies. Pursue Jesus. And, and continually be calling our spouse and our children and our church and everyone around us to run after Jesus, just like the woman at the well did. So I'm gonna close with prayer really quick. I'm gonna try not to cry this time. I don't know why I always cry whenever I pray. Yeah, let's just pray. <sighs> Father God, thank you for this Bible study with me. Thank you for this series and um, for this study of women of the Bible. I thank you for um, the time that we had to Bible journal together or um, just look at the woman of the well and talk about Christian hedonism, even though it's like such a, like a weird sounding, it sounds, I don't know, pagan or something. But God, we know that you are the satisfaction to all of our deepest longings. And we confess, Lord, we get so easily distracted by all the things around us, whether it's our spouse or our children or beauty in the world and shopping and all these kinds of different things, God, but you alone are satisfaction. Forgive us, God, for the time that we spend putting our eyes on other things, putting our attention on things of this world or anything, looking to anything for our satisfaction other than you, God. God, we thank you for your word and we thank you for the gospel proclaimed here at the well with this woman who is sinful just like us. God, we see ourselves in this woman. And so we thank you, God, for your work in and through her. God, I ask for you to work in this Bible study that the people who watch it may hear the gospel in and through your 
broken servant. <laughs> and um, despite the brokenness of your servant, God, and I just pray that um, they won't hear me, but they'll hear you, God, in this Bible study. God, I pray that you use this women's Bible study to bring someone to your throne, God, on their knees, crying out for that living water that only you bring, God, because only you satisfy. Father, as we talk about Christian hedonism, um, I pray that the conversation doesn't get distracted with um, all the debates or whatever, but God, that we just dwell on the idea that you are all that satisfies. Like you are the only way that we are satisfied in this life. You are all of our joy. You quench all of our thirsts, Jesus. And God, I just pray that you use this channel and this Bible study with me series and the series specifically on women of the Bible, that we won't be tempted to think that it's all about us, but rather see the fact that we are tools in your hands, God, and that you are writing a story in and through us. Father God, I thank you for the woman on the other end of the screen. I pray and ask for you to bless her. I pray that this women's Bible study will bless her and that as we study the women of the Bible, you will grow us in the knowledge and in your grace and in your wisdom, God, and lead us to continually hunger and thirst for you alone and run after you alone for our satisfaction, just like the whole Christian hedonism idea, God. And as we study the women of the Bible, God, as we continue Bible studying with me, women of the Bible, all those little dorky things that I say over and over again, God, may they not see me, hear me, but see and hear you, God not for my glory, but for your glory alone. This is your place on the internet, God. You be glorified in my life, in my silly little Bible study with me videos. And may the people who need to find these videos find them, God. Thank you for being our satisfaction, amen. All right, you guys, thank you for joining me for this Bible study with me. I pray that it encouraged you and that um, you'll join me next week on Friday for the Women of the Bible next episode yeah let me know down below what you think about this whole idea of christian hedonism if you'd heard about it if you like john piper all that kind of stuff Ooh, and you know what i've been meaning to say this if you've been bible journaling along with me go ahead take a picture and tag me in it like on instagram or facebook or something i would love to see it um yeah okay you guys i'll see you next time for our next bible study with me the woman of the bible bye you guys